that. Um, but I'll just uh, I'll, I'll just run through it quickly and uh, let me know if you want to add something. Um, I thought I, I'd uh, tell you about the roadmap short, uh, a bit. Uh, and then we can could go over the the sort of the process and architecture uh, of um, what needs to be done and have mm -hmm. some some discussion of what actually needs to to be done and uh, the choices we can make for the architecture and process. And uh, after that, times uh, it's time to sort of identify next actions and try to to put our finger on identify different work streams so we can write issues and we can start doing uh, to to get going more. Um, uh, side by side and working in parallel. Uh, and lastly, about GitHub setup, oh, I, I already set up a, a Zen Hub board, etc. So I'll we'll try to uh, use that as we go along. Uh, how does that sound? Do anyone want to add something to that list? Where did you drop this agenda, Christopher? Uh, it's a, it's a, yeah. the link is in the reward system working group channel. Oh, thank you very much. And there you have also links to the uh, SunHub board and as 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 well as Miro board. Uh, so I'll I'll switch actually to the I began doing this um, SunHub. Uh, roadmap thing. Uh, I'll, I'll try to use that as much as possible. Uh, after discussing with Livia and, and Tom and everyone involved, uh, we I think it would be a good idea to, to divide this project up in two parts. Uh, we need to have something online. Uh, as close to the commons upgrade as possible. It would be bad for everyone if, if it would be a prolonged period of time after the upgrade with, without having a working uh, praise system. Uh, so, so my proposal is that we, we, we divide the project in two, sort of, uh, and try to uh, do a MVP for, for end of November and then have something at version 1.0 uh, out by the end of, of January, uh, where the, the MVP would contain, uh, you know, really be a minimum viable product with, and, and test the hypothesis and, and test the um, a way forward and test the core functionality of, of the upgraded pre system. So it won't only include like, yeah, you need to be able to input data into the system. You need to be able to do the quantification and and the the um, the distribution and allocation afterwards. But but that's it. it. There doesn't need to be any like fancy dashboards, analytics options, uh, uh, login with MetaMask, all, all that kind of stuff doesn't need to be in place for for us to do a, a test if the the, the system works. Um, so th that's my idea to to uh, narrow it down to to that functionality to begin with, uh, but but also plan, of course, building building an architecture so that we we don't build for only for the MVP, but but we also have, we have built a structure that could fit in the, the rest of the stuff um, quite easily afterwards. Then, um, and. Yeah, so, so moving over to the uh, process and architecture discussion. First, I'd like to touch on the topic of, of source cred. I, I've, we have been discussing back and forth if it's a good idea to, to uh, integrate with source cred, um, either feed source cred data into our system or fed, feed our system, uh, our data into source cred. And uh, after investigating this uh, further and talking to a, a, a a few people from different communities. Uh, I think it it it, it, becomes, it becomes quite clear, clear that, 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 that sorry, now there's an echo. Giganta, Eth, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it becomes quite clear that uh, source credit is a complex system. Um, 
some people perceive the the distribution as it it, it it takes a lot of work to to adjust the parameters to get the results you you want from source cred that is a general conclusion uh, so by integrating our system uh, with source cred uh, i think we run a, a big risk of hmm, I, we introduce a lot of complexity, and there is also a big risk of being dependent on uh, on a third party system. Uh, so, and um, so sort of the final not nail in the coffin, but but yes, yeah, so, sort of was that I, I talked to Giveth, and they were like said that they they have had trouble adjusting the parameters, and that they are really happy with letting the systems run run in parallel. And not integrating them, and uh, so, so so that is my my proposal for, for us going forward. That we let 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 the source cred be source cred, and let praise be praise, uh, and, and not not to, to try to merge the two into something something that will become quite complex and also quite fragile uh, because of that. Nice. So we would still use it. We just wouldn't try to like integrate it with any kind of dev power. Exactly. And of course, if we would like to 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 merge the data streams at, at, at the final steps, doing you know common a, a, analytics where we, we we bring everything into one dashboard, of course that that is possible. But we don't have to merge it on a, like a technical level. Uh, and then we can also have a separate analysis, which I think is better than. Like we can have the possibility of having an analysis of all the data, but we can also have the analysis of the different streams that offer like different insights, and then we can combine them if you if we want. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a major point in favor of going separate, like Livia said. Like since we are testing the first month or the first two months, just see exactly how which part is behaving is going to be very useful, I think. Mm. And and also uh, our, our our needs and our, our our knowledge when it comes to data analysis are are way uh, bigger than than we could possibly program a, a dashboard for. So so there will be we will want to you know export to CSV file, import it to uh, an, another system to visualize it, uh, and um, yeah, and, and there those two streams can can meet if 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 needed. We export from both systems and we do our super advanced. Uh, uh, analysis if, if if we want uh, and that makes the whole thing also a bit s simpler um, it, it places more um, responsibility on, 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 on us to doing the you know the the, the token allocations and the calculations etc but, but i think we should try to keep it quite simple uh, at least not, not more complicated than it has been so so far um we're, we're not trying to replicate and build an, another uh, source cred a huge system but rather upgrading our, our current system and make sure that it's stable and and work working working well Uh, so, having a look at at the process, then if we remove uh, source cred from the equation, um, it makes it a, a bit bit simpler. Um, the, the the bots feed. Uh, data in some to some sort of of da data store or backend where we do a, an mm -hmm. assignment and and as assign quantifiers to to do a manual quantification of the data uh, of, of the praise data uh, we we merge that data and we calculate a, a, a token distribution or not necessarily a token distribution maybe we should um, let that be a community-based decision if you use the the, 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 the quantified price score uh, to calculate the token distribution or just use it for, for another for another purpose. Um, 
the final step of doing manual um, manual validation and uh, with the possibility of doing uh, manual adjustments and additions, um, and then feeding that data into, uh, in this case, as suggested, the, the rewards DAO uh, that, that takes care of the the, the payments, re requests funds from from the TEC, and and does the payments. Is, is something missing, some big component missing in this uh, process overview before we start sort of identifying different components, uh, like technical aspects of everything? I do have just a couple questions here looking at the system here, Christopher. So. Yeah. What I understand is when we wanted to redo this whole praise thing, there was two issues that seemed really apparent to me. It's that praise was wrongly quantified. And two, the process was very manual, creating a lot of overhead for the people having to quantify praise. So to that second point, um, it seems like this process is still very like manual heavy. And it seems like the people who are actually sorting through the praise will be doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And how might this become a problem as the community continues to rapidly scale up? Can I just jump in and, and say uh, say something on that? Uh, also, I, I have to warn you at uh, any moment, uh, Amin's gonna show up and I have to run to another, run to the call with him. But uh, he, I, I think the big piece here is that we're gonna, t praise is gonna have smaller scope so even though we're not integrating source cred source cred will take we won't be praising people for doing github work and we won't be praising people for posting on the forums we're gonna also integrate alexandra i still believe right right uh, christopher so yeah hopefully that, so that we won't be praising people for going to meetings and we also won't be praising people for twitter hopefully we'll find a way to integrate a twitter bot so now praise will become uh just focused on qualitative uh, things, things that we just can't measure, and really more of uh, like authentic gratitude. And so I think there will be less praise, and uh, and it will be of higher value, uh, less boring to quantify, right, and less uh, draining to quantify, uh, and it'll just be more mm, impactful. And and unfortunate, but unfortunately, there is just no really. There, it's very difficult to quantify qualitative data. And no matter what we do, if we try to automate it, it just won't be as good, in my opinion, as if we get everyone to look at it. And the other value of people looking at it, which I think is very underrated, is the updates that ev that you get to see, the perspective, the, uh, the community members gaining a wider perspective of what is happening in, in the ecosystem. And I, I think especially as we grow, that will be even more valuable. And if people really want to, um, you know, understand what's happening, they'll just, they'll want to take on a praise quant. I almost think of yeah. praise quant becoming like jury duty, you know? I, I wouldn't say jury duty. Uh, I would say more like, uh, like, like being paid to get an update, you know? It's like the community call. I think having a culture where it's like, you know, praise, quantifying praise is part of your civic duty. Yeah, and also it's an, an honorable thing to do, something that you look forward to, to doing because it, it gives you insight in the community, show, the community shows that they, they trust you to take on this important task um, because you have influence over uh, the, 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 the amount of rewards someone is getting. Yeah, there's something Ostrom talks in the book that is uh, when you give someone the opportunity to monitor others from a place of um, like insights of the system, like if you frame monitoring as uh, a gift of information, like you're seeing what's happening, but you're going to be like in, in, in an insider into it. 
uh, that gives the person like the advantage of this very unique information. And that makes them more like likely to comply with the cultural processes and, and for others to do the same because there is this positive feedback on, on the monitoring and it's not something draining. I like super plus one to everything Griff said. And just to add um, first that there is a way to integrate uh, Twitter to SourceCrad. Uh, Hass was sharing that. Maybe Christopher has more information. And also we were talking today, Christopher and I, about uh, how to make this process even more simple and effective of the quantification. So something that we used to do was to have like random numbers that each person could pick if they were like using from one to a hundred or for one to from one to zero to five to quantify things. But then Christopher suggested that we would had we would have something like a Fibonacci sequence, for example, that you have numbers that are predetermined and that they uh, get higher in a, almost in an exponential exponential way. So you have like one, three, five, 10, 80, I don't know, I'm butchering the numbers, but something like that. So people wouldn't have to think about how much they are giving to things. It would become much more automated in their way of valuing things. And it would be much more clear what is a contribution that receives an 80 versus one that receives a 50 versus one that receives a one. And we would start having this understanding of what are the base layer contributions and, and how they interact with each other. And also that would be subjective to the whole data set this person is looking at and not as a predetermined value. So it wouldn't be like categories. It would be something they would be like repurposing every time they quantify. I, I hope that makes sense. I, I didn't understand that last part actually about the whole data set. So it wouldn't be like, oh, people are quantifying Twitter versus meetings versus, um, I don't know, writing a document as kind of predetermined categories. They would be defining, they would be valuing like, oh, someone being very helpful or um, a person listening to something else or someone providing care work. And these things are very hard to put in a category, but they, each person would create their subjective value of how to measure these types of contributions, looking at the whole data set. So maybe in that data set, there is like really high subjective contributions versus something very small and they would create their own sense of like what is more valuable. Sorry, I'm just gonna stop talking because I think I need to elaborate this better in my head. Um, I had a... So, sorry, what? Go ahead. Okay, I had two questions actually uh, with regard to Twitter. I'm not sure if like integrating source grid into Twitter would be favorable. I, I think that can have a lot of uh, ill effects because like uh, automatic uh, bots on Twitter to like say or repost that someone did of our tweets would be like somewhat easier. I'm not sure how we account for that. One thing I think we could do is use something like Orbit, which like already tracks interactions people do with your content. So maybe that can be a tool we could use. We also have an API we could like input that data into our entire play system, if that might be interesting. And the second question I had is like, uh, source script for GitHub also has a few issues. I think uh, it weighs each pull request equivalently which I think uh, like incentivize people to split up their pull requests into multiple versions. So it, 
could we like counter that somehow or is that something because i've noticed that at one hive and meta game and i think that's something that they had like each pr gets equivalent value for for the uh, github in source cred i, I would say f f for the praise project that is sort of uh, out of scope we, we we know that that we we, we cannot include it uh, here and yeah i also heard that the source cred ha has some issues and if those issues are are large enough uh, that uh, we wouldn't want to use source cred for, for github at all that then we we have a a problem or we have a leak we have people contributing value in a system that we are not tracking and how do we solve that either by uh, living with the, the yeah the source cred kinks or or uh, to try to also track github issues in in praise which i don't spontaneously think would be the right way um, so <laughs> i have no straight answer to that basically i think like i'm good i feel like i'm always saying the same but maybe for that case, if we see that source doesn't really track the work of this GitHub work of small teams, which are already kind of closed or kind of clear, maybe substituting, substituting the coordinate could be an option because it kind of gives the team the choice to see, okay, this pull request was big, this was smaller and kind of sorted out amongst the team themselves, which could be a, an idea. Just, yeah. Definitely. I, I think that that is, that has come up a few few times uh the idea of, of uh, praise not being like the the main source of income for for no one praise uh, what comes from praise is a is a bonus it's a, a gratitude it's a, a, some icing on the cake but but it's not the main source of, of income for no one um and then then if if people do substantial work uh, in more fixed uh, work group settings uh, then they probably should that work group should should have more like a fixed budget or if they do outside research work then they maybe should do do a, a grant that, that that we can decide on with the conviction voting so that they have a secured budget etc uh, so so th that is one one challenge with all this to make sure that we have the right uh, focus for, for what praise should reward um, and and um, for your, your your first question, uh, uh, about so sorry, I, I now I forgot that one. It was about source credit as well. No, no, it was uh, about it's, the, it's, the Twitter bot. Yeah, I, I, um, and uh, I spoke to Has, um, and there is no um, Twitter integration for uh, source cred. There, I think there was one in the works, or but there is no nothing ready to be used. Uh, so, so yes, I, I, I share your assessment that integrated, either in, integrating it to Discord, using that as, a, as an interface for, for moving data into to praise, or, or somehow writing a, a, um, something that interfaces directly with, with our API and, and feed, feed it into the praise API, that, that would be more simple. Yeah, so there's uh, Twitter analytics. Uh, the, there's some tools for Twitter analytics where, like, you could uh, get some like uh, interaction percentage. It's like a monthly thing where you could get to know like who interacted with your uh, account more. Uh, a few websites do this. But the one I, that I know is called Orbit. Uh, that can be something we can look at in future. I think, but for now, I think it might be best like maybe separate out Twitter and focus on Telegram and Discord, which I think we could easily integrate in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we discussed uh, if, uh, if D Discord is a, is a good interface for feeding uh, the system with, with praise data. And, and my idea about what that was, it's, it's, I, I like the idea, idea of, of being yes. able to do a loose coupling of data. Uh, so, sort of not having to go, go through a strict API to get data into the system. Uh, I, I don't know if that is possible. If we, if so, so we, we're placing the workload on ourselves instead of placing the workload on 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 bot uh, um, developers. So, if if there is a bot that, that feeds interesting data in, into discourse, uh, Discord, uh, then we could uh, adjust our, our praise bot or praise bot listener to listen for that data and, and take care of it. So we wouldn't have to 
we have we wouldn't have to convince that bot developer to do any changes at, at all, basically. Um, I don't know if that is technically possible. Um, yeah, we but, could we could open up our uh, the whatever listener we make to other bots. But another approach that we can look at is like if we're making a dedicated backend for this, we could uh, have a microservice architecture where like uh, our bots are actually not actual Discord bot. The listener is an HTTP uh, server. So Discord made this new thing a while ago called interactions, where like you could use a slash command in the server and that uh, requests your bot. So that's an HTTP request instead of uh, a bot listening for messages. I think if we make like an API, we could just make it convenient for the developers too. Like they could just make simple HTTP requests in their code to our API. But now another factor to this might be like, how do we uh, distribute the API keys and how do we keep it safe? For that, I think maybe your suggestion might be better. So we could work on that. Yeah, that, that that because that that places zero work effort on on, on the bot developers and 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 our, we, we take responsibility for for picking up the the information we need instead. Um, but I, I guess that that is a bit later decision. Um, yeah. I have a question about uh, that part where he says autoquant, like assignment mm -hmm. autoquant, and um, wouldn't wouldn't all of the praise things just be manual quant, and then anything coming from Alexandra and SourceCred that would have an autoquant? Yeah. So, so that that's the idea that that um, for instance, like. If we feed the Twitter data into the system, that would be auto quantified. But the, uh, the question is, would, would we still uh, call it praise data, or, or yeah. no? We, we, I can make that uh, um, make it a bit more clear. Uh, this uh, diagram. So then, then, then now it seems like it, it comes in all, all the same, and it, and, it, and it gets assigned to some sort of small robot who does uh, the auto uh, quantification. But but that happens at you know at import time. Uh, yeah, maybe that is another layer, which is this other system that is source cred in Alexandra. So there's like the praise layer and the source cred layer and the Alexandra layer. And then they will, these layers will only meet in the rewards DAO or in the dashboard for analysis if we want to put them together, right? Yeah, but we have also discussed the, the ability to let Twitter data pass through this, this system. Uh, because otherwise, if it, if it doesn't pass through source cred and it doesn't pass through this system, uh, wh where is it quantified and, and calculated? But didn't uh, has talk about that that there was a way to integrate Twitter with source cred? It's it's not done. Oh, uh, it was never done. It's just no. like something that could be done. Yes, that's how I uh -huh. I remember it. Um, but more like that, that, that uh, the, the, the manual, uh, the praise data goes in here, and then we have the some. Remove that bot. Look at this mirror wizard. How to quant. 
I had a question related to this uh, from like the first discussion we had. I thought uh, auto quant was also supposed to be uh, um, it was supposed to be a data management application where like we make the bot we somehow train the bot to automatically quantify all the base. I thought that was the purpose. That's not the purpose. So okay, it, to auto quantify uh, all data. Sorry, sorry. What, what was that? What you said? Yeah, I, I thought this was uh, this was supposed to be like we're going to take all the past quant data, load it up into this uh, bot, maybe train a model so that it can uh, automatically assign quant. Uh, it can automatically quantify place for all of the place, and then we like compare both of these places or something like that. That's what I thought initially. Uh, I guess I was wrong there. Sorry, I, I wasn't um, understanding everything of that, actually. I think he was understanding that there was just going to be an auto quantifier and that there wouldn't be any manual quantification necessary in the system. Uh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I thought the auto, auto quantifier was like supposed to be a side experiment where we like take the past quant data and trade a model to automatically quantify the place. Uh, and we have manual trace to and then we like compare both of those data and see like uh, and like try to somehow uh, estimate like if our uh, auto quantifier is working and in future if we can just use the auto quantifier or something like that. Yeah, I also have an idea like maybe when we do auto quant, maybe people have to registry or do some kind of thing like you know like to make sure like not some bots are joining our calls and getting praised sending it some random addresses like and maybe we don't have to be so strict like the trusted sheet but maybe have some kind of process to avoid bots and multi accounts and stuff like that especially if it's going to be auto quant yeah no, that definitely needs some some investigation and and uh, we have 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 to have some some kind of good architecture or how how do we bring in uh, the data into the system that is not going to be uh, manually quantified uh, do we allow a pre quantified data to enter the system and, and thereby having to trust the, the the bot that that feeds the data into the system or do we uh, always do the actual quantification inside the the, the system, um, but I guess that that, that uh, that's a uh, um, uh, something to d dig around more in the, for the like the the coming week or so. Uh, and my hope uh, were that that we could start identifying. Uh, like the different work streams and maybe uh, assign people on, on, on work, working on those. Um, and, and, the, uh, and Livia, I think this, uh, this first question goes out to you uh, or, or everyone basically. Can we do, uh, the, the first thing we need is, uh, we, we need some, some requirements. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I, I started one epic called the praise MVP specs. Uh, and I think we need some choice of backend architecture, uh, choice of frontend architecture. We need some uh, start specifying the, the, the API. How do we feed data into the system? Uh, we need the, the process the praise process description. And I would say that that's a more a verbal description of, of the, the, the diagram. Um, that I, I've drawn, but, but that, that describes more in detail of what happens at each step. For instance, uh, how do the quantifiers get chosen? Uh, how do uh, the, what do we call them? Uh, how do the reward system committee get chosen? Uh, so describing the, the, the whole process from start to finish, like, yeah, and, and, and then the reward system committee posts a, a, a a proposal to the TEC, request funds, blah, blah, blah. Um, that kind of description. Uh, we re need, we absolutely need the, the rules uh, of pace and quantification. 
uh, and that has Libya agreed to take on the lead for for that to define uh, what do we what do we praise and how do we praise and and how how much how should we quantify it the the theoretical rules are, are around the, uh, the the quantification process so that we that we need to encode in in code. <laughs> uh, and we need to start doing some wireframing and, and that kind of work as well. Uh, sorry, I, I, I was beginning to ask you, Libby, and everyone, is is it possible to set, like, do a short, short like, specification sprint and, and like, invest a, a week? Or should we invest, uh, place two weeks on, on, uh, on doing the, this work? What, what do you think? Yeah, we could try to uh, take a week and, and see what we can get started with and experiment with that. We could use, like, if this is the first thing we do, we could use, we could even start experimenting in the practice now, like trying to see how people uh, start praising with this new guidelines and what works and what doesn't, what feels like unnatural. So maybe if this is the first thing we do, it would be, it would give insights for the future. And I think there's another part that it feels very annoying to solve is like, how would we get all of the addresses from people and how? For that, I think we could, uh... If you could maybe fork one hive spawn in, uh, instead they've made architecture to like uh, feed the data directly from Discord into uh, the ledger, uh, into source scripts ledgers. So that's something we could do. And, like we could have the same thing on Twitter, but we need to like uh, maybe change our own source script instance. I don't know how how much they have modified their instance. But uh, we also we need the uh, the information in, in in our praise system, and not only source cred. Doesn't every uh, common stack member have to give an address? So I think we actually have a data data set with with all the TEC holders and an address that links them to to them. Just for the hatch. So moving forward, that would be really tricky because anybody can just jump in. Hmm. And I think we also, everyone involved in the TEC currently aren't hatchers, are there? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, not, not guaranteed. Not right now. Yeah. OK, yeah. Sorry to mention that. No, I just I just said it's not guaranteed, you know. Um, and probably going forward, fewer and fewer people will be part of the common stack that are in here. Yeah. Um, I wonder. So I hear that there's two different places that we need to get this praise, and one is from Discord still, and one is from Twitter. And Telegram. so I'm wondering, from Telegram, okay. So I'm wondering if there's like an onboard process that can happen that would also include like a praise covenant which is what Libby is working on which would be like guidelines for praise and then that would give them the ability to give praise and also receive praise like an opt-in uh, uh, just be automatic uh, I have a few thoughts about the onboarding process I think it's already Two onboarding processes that they're working on. So I think maybe it would be better to like make this an opt-in. People like use a command or something to uh, initiate the process, and uh, they could just set up their data uh, their data into uh, source code. I think we could link uh, Telegram and Discord bots to uh, backend. Yeah, I think they're making kind of API. like a DM bot that would just come in and be like, "Hey, your handle, your address." This is how you praise, you know? Yeah, we could do that, but I think we shouldn't do it automatically because I think currently the TC is like, we've got two proposals for onboarding process. One of them is like, uh, is from the onboarding working group, which is like onboards people into the TC, like to see explanations about that and collect some data about like 
uh, why they joined and details like that. And another one that we were working for is uh, a capture kit. So like I'm not sure if we like spin up a third onboarding process. It might like people might not see that. So we could like make a command or something. We make a channel called uh, set up your details or something like that. The way other like one hive and Mythium have, and we could like uh, people could use a command or something in there and have that. And for Twitter, we can have a DM bot for that. Same thing. Would it be possible with that to have some type of check boxes, for example, a brief explanation of the reward systems and what are the uh, layers that we use? So um, if you agree to participate in praise, you can check this box. In Alexandra, you can check this box. In SourceCred, you can check this box. And then give the address. And would it be able that from this bot that the address information goes only to the boxes that people checked? Uh, this, the latter can be done for the former. I think uh, we can do that in Discord, but I'm not sure if we can implement that in Telegram. So Discord, instead of checkboxes, we could do like react with a checkmark emoji. Uh, or their new API has buttons too, but uh, that depends on like what choices we make with respect to our bot and how we make it. Uh, for Telegram, I'm not sure if there's a way to make checkboxes, but maybe you could have something like type yes, no. Um, or I think we could make emojis on that. I don't, I, know I haven't worked a lot with Telegram CP, so I don't know if you could make a checkbox system there. It's I almost it like exists. user onboarding is, is a separate thing completely. How, how do we uh, give uh, people praise uh, um, praise abilities and how do we get the, the praise to them or how, and how do we inform them about praise existing and how do we get their user information into the system um, so uh, for for the discord we could do like we could set up one channel called uh, something like set uh, set your address or something and the like whatever onboarding message gets sent to them has the text like for opting into praise go to this channel and type this command or something like that. I think most other DAOs do that. Uh, they have like a command where you could, uh, you just uh, send the bot a command and you could uh, fill in your data. Hmm. Yeah, and that, so that, that would be handled by the, the, the same praise bot uh, where we, we use for, for praising. Yeah, I think it would be best if we like use the praise bot for that. Yes. Okay. Uh, did we did did we agree that that one week was enough to try to uh, tangle out the the all, all the requirements, not all the requirements, but, but get get started and get a, get that going, or do we need two weeks? Yeah, a week should be okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, my thought was it, it all depends on how, how much uh, everyone has on, on their schedule uh, for the coming week, uh, etc. Uh, it's difficult to, to determine uh, beforehand how, how big, how, how much work this takes uh, also. Um, I mean, this could be a draft of yeah. of something to get started started with, and yes. then maybe we have a week of test of this process, and then we reevaluate in two weeks what we need to change before putting into any code or something. Uh, so, so when it comes to the the rules of praise, should we plan that for 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 ne next week? Uh, 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 sort of a dry run of maybe, or maybe that is a session in itself. We would like to do a dry run with some some test praise data, and like if we were to use these rules of praise, how how would uh, an actual quantification look? Just in theory, it just now now we process twenty praise uh, items and and have a discussion about it. 
But maybe that, cool. that is doable for, for next week. Yeah, let's let's aim for it. Uh, then I'll add that. Uh, praise and dry run for next week. Then uh, does uh, um, I feel like taking on wireframes and process description? Or, or yeah, feels like. Um, I'd like to help out with the process description. Yeah, good. I, I you you notice my slight hesitancy when I said that the the the, the first one the wireframes, absolutely. I I want to do that. The second one I was. Yeah. And so this is really just going to be just fleshing out the actual flow, the yes. technical flow from start to finish. Okay. Yes. Okay. In in text form, I guess. Um, where do everyone prefer to? If we were try to work together, do we work in Google Docs or would we rather do a, a what's it called, a MD? Um, HackMD. Google Docs is way better for collaborative writing, I find, unfortunately. HackMD kind of sucks for editing people's stuff. OK. So anyone opposed uh, going with the, uh, Google Docs primarily? Uh, does someone want to take on like the the API perhaps? The... I could help with that, but uh, there's a question I have related to that is uh, who would be working on this? Is RDF PVX who is like working on the praise bot in general be making it or would we be making our own applications? Because if they're making it, they're going to be making it in Java. Uh, with Spring Boot, I can't help with that. But if we're making our own API, then I could help with that. And, and that and, is uh, one, one technical question. Uh, yeah, Rudolf, he, he works in, in, in Spring in Java. And that places him quite alone as backend developer, is my guess. I don't know. I, I used to do Java, but that was 20 years ago. Um, But he's really eager to 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 do the back end, which is of course is uh, speaks for letting him letting him have a stab at it. Um, who else ha has capacity to uh, uh, nagan or uh, yeah, I did some Java it's also some time ago, but if if he can kind of take the lead, I can help with whatever uh, he wants. I'm happy to do that, yes. Yeah, I could also help with, if someone takes a lead, I could help with small things. Yeah, that, that's something I could do. Um, because I, I, yeah, I don't have anything against Java. Uh, and it seems like Spring is a really super well-established framework. It has been around since 2003 something. So it's, uh, and uh, that seems to me like a good, a wise choice if we were to go with the Web2 uh, architecture to choose something that is really reliable has been around long, uh, uh, so we don't, you know, end up using some cool new technology and, and getting stuck uh, because of that. Uh, but the defining the API is is uh, not necessarily the same thing as doing the backend uh, work. You know, the the the, uh, the API needs to be defined in more uh, on a theoretical level. You know, the the, the rules of praise and quantification that those have to be so somewhat encoded in the the API, or not necessarily all of them, but so, so some of them. Um, I so could I, draft up that. I could I could work on the APS. Uh, logic in how we're handling things. I could work on that. Cool. Uh, 
Uh, and when it comes to front end, so so Nugget, did I understand you correctly? Can I can I put you you and and, and Rudolf on, on the back end uh, architecture? Nice. Yeah. Uh, and that leaves the front end stuff. Um, maybe we have a hole there, or do 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 we have someone? I like doing the front end as well. I, I could I could start taking that on, but, but I don't know if I if I should take that on fully going forward. But but that that could be a a future question. Um, I think maybe once some of this stuff slows down on this uh, config dashboard, you have some more front end developers. Yeah. No, and, and actually, I'd be quite happy to set the, the initial architecture. I have some, some ideas. Um, cool. That, that seems like we uh, have some, some stuff to do, everyone. Huh? Are you, you're yeah, Pablo. Pablo. There. <laughs> yeah, cool. And I don't know if he's, he's not called RDF BBX on GitHub, Rudolf. It's, it's not something else. I don't remember just now. It's H-U-R-E-K. Sorry, H U. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, and the the dry run we'll uh, do together with the uh, hopefully then uh, the the rules of praise and and maybe an idea of how how the front end would look. Yeah, no, not necessarily. We could do it only in theory. Uh, great. Uh, Have I missed something when it comes to this initial spec phase? I had a question regarding the boundaries. Uh, is this supposed to be only for the TEC or like would this also be used by uh, the common stack or by Giveit or something? Uh, like if we're doing that, we might need to change how our backend works and account for different uh, groups. Uh, I, I'd say uh, one one instance, one installation equals one community. To make it simple, uh, the the same way as the discourse works, uh, hosting for, for one instance, uh, hosting for doing for, for many communities becomes way more complex and also places a you know responsibility of doing the hosting on on some poor bastard. Um, So, so ideally, in, in, in the end, when we have released uh, like a version one uh, of this open source thing, that it, it will be you know like a, a, um, a Docker container, basically con containing most of the stuff, uh, which would allow for for simple installation by by um, Giveth or or a common stack. Uh, do you agree on that, that it's a good idea to let the, every community take care of their own hosting? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. And that would be if... I think it's a good plan for the MVP. Yeah, because we don't want to start with a mega project where we need to you know, form a company and, and charge hosting fees, et cetera, for, for doing it. So this, it's, a, it's an open source tool. Um, Download it and install it uh, and run it yourself. Uh, One uh, thing regarding this process here that I think I wasn't really clear on is the process for getting manual quantifiers. Was there anything decided around that? 
undecided. How how does that work? Uh, that that is up yeah. in the air because that seems yeah. like that was a big blocker for the old prey system. Yeah. Was that it was always the same people? I think with this with this uh, new scope that we're kind of searching or finding, I think this would will be something interesting to do for the stewards, like because since they are kind of more in there, they, they kind of get more information out of knowing what is being done and and how the data looks. Like they're gonna get important insights, which kind of will help them, I think. So maybe that I, would be like a start. Yeah. I was thinking uh, kind of like a, a Celeste system. So you have a pool of quantifiers that get randomly pulled for each cycle. And then they get, they get rewarded. Like, so they sign up to become a, a juror or a keeper. And then they get called for, for quantify duty. They get paid to do it. And then everyone kind of, you know, does their part in quantifying praise. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good idea. A pool of quantifiers. I love that. Yeah. But I think we, we thought about that initially, Nuggin, to have mostly like the stewards being there. But then I feel like what, we're, what Griff was talking about before, of like this offering um, a learning process for for people to see what's happening in the community. It's also a great thing for newcomers mm -hmm. somehow. Like in the common stack, we started to do that to onboard new contributors, like come quantify praise so you understand what's happening. Yeah. Sorry, could, could yeah, I just squeeze in it two small things before we finish up? Uh, and that, 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 that's two, two principles, which I would propose that we let, we let uh, was be guided by when, when designing the specs. And that is when it comes to, to the data we store that we try to uh, have immutable data as far as possible. So no, no overwriting of data in the database. Uh, basically, we all, always have a version history. Like we, we treat our data as if it would have been a ledger. Uh, uh, and that's mostly for, for, for transparency and trace, traceability, so that at all times we can move backwards in time and see who, who did what at which time. Um, and also that, that we think um, that, that community involvement at as, at as many points as possible. We, may, we, we want to build a configurable system. If there is a parameter, then there should be an option for, for the community to decide on that parameter. And it, we should, it should be uh, possible for us to, to connect uh, the, the use of that parameter with, the, with that vote and, and with that quanti quantification, that, that praise round. So you can see for, during this praise round, these were the par par parameters that were used. And, and those parameters were, were voted in by the community using, uh, on this vote. Um, So unless uh, someone objects uh, to to those two principles, uh, I, I guess that that's the uh, final words for for today. And uh, um, this looks really great. Thank you so much. Cool. See you all. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Chris. Thank you guys. Thank you all.